are the church. We 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 are the church. Happy Friday, guys. We're going to start off worship today with Radical God. but this is going to be the exact opposite because I bet you guessed it. We're celebrating Jesus's resurrection because he's alive. So join us for a kind of Eastery service in the middle of July. It'll be fun. All right. Come on down for the invocation. In the name of the creator, in the name of the redeemer, in the name of the sustainer, we welcome you to worship. And now it's time for our theme verse! Theme verse! We come from the way We come from the way We are the church, we are the church, we are the church, we are the church Our next song 
song is going to be He is Alive. So whip out your surfboards and get ready. to why this is such an important thing in our faith. So today's story is called The Empty Tomb, and it starts on page 482. It was early in the morning on the third day after Jesus died. The sky was pink and red with the first light of the sun. The woman didn't notice the sky. They hurried to the cave that contained Jesus' body. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James led the way. Two others, Salome and Joanna, carried the spices to rub on the body of Jesus. They had a job to do. When the tomb of Jesus came into sight, they froze. Uh-oh, they had forgotten about the huge stone that sealed the opening of the, to the cave. How could they move it? The woman kept going to the cave anyway. As they came closer, the woman could see that the stone had already been rolled away. They peeked inside. Oh, it was dark in there. Brr, it was cold in there. Drip, drop, it was damp in there. What? It was empty in there. Jesus was gone. An angel appeared in the sparkling white clothes. The glow from the angel brightened even the darkest corners of the cave. The women shielded their eyes from the blinding light. Don't be afraid, the angel said. Jesus isn't here. This is a place for the dead. Jesus is alive. Hurry, the angel said. Go tell the disciples. The women did not delay. They ran to tell Jesus' friend what they had seen and heard. Oof. Mary bumped into a man, tripped, and fell at his feet. Wait. She knew those feet. A familiar hand reached out to help her. Wait. She knew that hand. She looked up. Yes, she knew that smile. It was Jesus. Hello, friends, Jesus said. Jesus was really alive. The women hugged his feet and shouted with joy. Go tell the others the good news that I am alive, Jesus said. I will meet them in Galilee. I can't wait to see them again. The women had a new job to do. They had to tell everyone Jesus was alive. This ends the reading. So Jesus is alive. He rose from the dead. He couldn't stay dead, we said in our Radical God song. 
Pastor Ingrid is going to help us think about this and what it has to do with grace and the new life that we need to live and get to live every day because of this great Easter story. So let's let's listen to what Ingrid has to say. Well, hi, Pastor Ingrid. We're so glad to welcome you to our worship service today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, great. We've had a good uh, good week learning about grace, and you are kind of going to like wrap it up for us this week, and we are excited to hear what, uh, what you have to share with us. So we'll jump right in here, first of all, just getting to know you a little bit. So can you tell us first what community you call home? Yes, um, my family lives in Wilmer, Minnesota. Yeah, awesome. Close to camp, so that's helpful. Um, yeah, really, we get to see you a lot, so that's nice. Some kids might recognize you, too, if they're watching. You've helped at camp with lots of things, but especially our first communion retreats. So if they're like, why does she look familiar? That's probably why. Yeah. <laughs> I might have a little bit different glasses this time. Than oh. when I so. Yeah, fun. Well, Pastor Ingrid, when you're in Wilmer there, what what is the church community that you call home? Yeah, so um, the church community I call home is Benji Lutheran Church. That's just right here in Wilmer. So we've been a part of Benji for about three years now. So. Yeah, great. It's fun to hear about all the different churches people are a part of. So cool. All right, next question is a favorite of mine. Can you tell us about your vocation? What has that looked like in your life? Yeah, so I've had and still have quite a few vocations. Um, uh, I mean, some primary vocations, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, um, and now I'm a spouse. I have a husband, Dane. Um, and I'm also a mom to Courtney and Isaac. And so those are all important vocations. Um, I've been I've been called by God to serve as a nurse. I've worked in children's hospitals. Um, and then I'm also a pastor and I have served in congregations uh, in a couple different places. And actually right now, my vocation is serving God's mission here at my home. I'm uh, on leave from call, so I don't serve a church congregation right now. Um, I get to be at home with our eight-year-old and our five-year-old and just get to um, to serve God in my own home and then also in our community of Wilmer. So those are my many vocations. Yeah, they're all good. It's fun to hear the variety of things people are doing uh, with their lives. And that that's another great addition. So awesome. Well, the, the burning question of the day here is, you know, it's it's um, as we're recording this on Wednesday, we'll people will see this on Friday, but it is a very hot day today and ice cream would be just hit, hitting the spot today. So we're curious, what is your favorite kind of ice cream? So I would say um, my favorite kind of ice cream is anything where mint is in the title. So uh, in, in our community, you can get mint cow tracks ice cream, which is a favorite. Um, mint chip also is a good option. So anything really with mint in the title, I'm very excited about. Nice. I also love mint chip ice cream. That sounds ah. great. So refreshing. <laughs> okay. And then one more kind of funny question here. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to hear your answer to this. Do you have a secret gift that not many people know that you have? I've thought about this question quite a bit. Um, I would say one of my secret gifts that I have is I am excellent at weeding. And I don't know if any of the people listening uh, or watching have a garden at their house or maybe just have a very weedy backyard like we do. But growing up, one of the consequences that uh, my parents gave us if we struggled to make good choices was we got the opportunity to weed. <laughs> so I've had a lot of practice in weeding and I'm pretty good at it, uh, getting the root out, you know, picking out a good time of day to weed. So 
um, I would say it's not a it's not a gift that's maybe well celebrated, but I, I'm excellent at weeding. So. That's that's awesome. So, do you even tackle thistles when you're weeding? I do tackle thistles. I do have to wear some pretty thick gloves because I am not tough enough to deal with. <laughs> but I do tackle them. I do tackle them. So. I find it to be joyful to get the root of a thistle out of the ground. So very gratifying. Yes. Well, that's fun. I love it. Well, uh, as we said, when we first started talking here, we are talking this week, we've been digging into grace a little bit as a really important part of our faith um, and an important part of being in the church and being part of the church um, here. Uh, especially maybe even during this time where we're not um, maybe feeling like normal. And so we want to dig into grace just a little bit with you. So the first question about that is just, is, is there a time in your life when you remember sort of a change in or a new understanding of grace um, and just what that meant? Well, I would say that I am a person who uh, doesn't always realize or learn things in the moment, but after some time has passed and I look back on them, um, often I am able to see uh, God at work, and I'm also uh, able to see things like grace in my life. So I'm not really great at doing it in the moment, but um, one of the things that I thought about when you asked that question is growing up I was about eight years old, I think, and my six-year-old cousin and I decided to uh, go outside and play on her family farm um, in southwest Minnesota, actually pretty close to Worthington. And we had been told by our parents not to go outside and play because it had rained quite a bit. And um, my aunt and uncle had this amazing, um, they had hogs and they had cattle and they had a whole bunch of animals. And so there was quite a bit of mud, as you can imagine, outside. Uh, but my cousin and I decided that this was a great idea to go outside and go up to visit the hog barn. And so we started walking up the hill uh, to go visit the hogs and about halfway up the hill, I looked down and realized that my tennis shoe that had been tied to my foot was no longer on my foot. Um, because the mud was so thick, I had pulled my foot out of my shoe as I was walking. The same thing happened for my cousin. Um, we both looked at each other in horror because we knew our parents were not going to be excited that we were outside walking up the hill. Um, and so we found a very small spot to stand, a piece of cement. Um, after losing both of our shoes to get to that piece of cement, we stood there and yelled for our parents as loud as we could. <laughs> remember my dad coming out of the house um, in his nice dress shoes and his nice dress clothes and looking up at me on the hill and he just he saw me and he walked up the hill and he picked me up under one arm and my cousin under the other and he carried us down the hill and um and my dad was a person who was a talker so he didn't really say anything to us and i didn't get you know like i didn't have to go weed or anything as a consequence <laughs> for this. um but uh, that was an experience for me of grace where i had found myself stuck in something that i couldn't get myself out of and there was this surprising gift that came and picked me up um from where I was stuck and, and moved me to a different place um, where I could, you know, actually like play and, and be myself. And so I was no longer stuck um, because of, I was no longer stuck and I was able to be free. And so for me, that was an experience when I think about grace, um, getting unstuck and also the surprise gift that it is. Um, that's what I think. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good analogy. I mean, I mean, it's an example, but also like you can 
picture that like what that would feel like and i like that i like that we can relate to that awesome well that goes right into um the story or the the topic here of today too right before talking to you we read the story from the spark story bible called the empty tomb and it's really i mean we've been talking in our worship it's the easter story which normally we don't talk about too much in the middle of the summer but um as we're learning about grace this is of course a really important part so if can you just help us uh think through as we wrap up this grace week like why is this story important to our lives today and and what can we learn about god's grace from this easter story yeah so i have kind of a long answer for that so hopefully everybody can stick with me um <laughs> for me grace it's hard to understand grace and empty tomb unless we um under not understand fully but we try to understand the cross um, so I think Jesus dying on the cross, uh, for me, is meaningful today because all of us have um, times where we struggle or we suffer or we're in pain or, or bad things happen. Maybe that, you know, we had something to do with them or maybe they just happen and we had no control at all. And so for me, it's really important to understand that God shows up in those moments. Like God doesn't just show up for like the happy moments where everybody's getting along and things are really great. God especially shows up and is at work um, when we're suffering or struggling or sad or in pain. And so I think, um, so that's an important part of the cross for me. Um, also, the cross reminds us that all of us experience the end of things. So um, for some of us, you know, we might have had a family member die, and so we think about death as the end. Um, but even if you haven't had a family member or a friend die, you know, maybe you've had to switch schools because your parents took a different job, or um, you, a friend had to move away, and so now you don't get to see them anymore. Um, maybe you've, uh, maybe you've grown out of your favorite bike or your favorite outfit and you can't use them or wear them anymore. So all of us experience these end of things that things, it's another way we talk about in the church about death, that the death is the end of something. Um, so when we get to the empty tomb, I think what, what grace is, is that, even though things end, God provides a way for us to experience life um, through those losses and death, on the other side of those losses and death, and in spite of the fact that we experience those sort of deaths or losses. Um, so grace is uh, that experience of coming out the other side and trusting that God is still working and is still with us even when tough things are happening. Uh, so the empty tomb is really meaningful because uh, it shows us that God in Jesus was still at work, even though Jesus was crucified, God was still at work and brought new life. He brought Jesus new life. Um, but in our lives, um, in our everyday lives, I haven't had anybody uh, be resurrected that I have lost. <laughs> Um, but I have had moments of resurrection where uh, a friend apologized after we had a really um, bad fight um, and they hurt me in some way. Uh, I've experienced resurrection or a new life when, um, like in eighth grade, I realized I couldn't stay friends with uh, the person I'd been friends with for a long time. And I found a new seat to sit at, at the, in the lunchroom that was an experience of resurrection and new life. Um, you know, finding a new favorite outfit after I, you know, my daughter had grown out of her favorite outfit. That is an experience of new life, um, even though we experience loss and death. So I think grace is surprising because we don't always expect it. We don't always see it, but it's also something uh, where we see God at work 
on the other side of suffering and pain and death and, and where God reminds us that God's with us always. Oh, yeah, all of that. Like, <laughs> I love it. Um, Pastor Ingrid, we've been uh, learning a bunch of new jokes during these worships, too. And I understand that you also have one for us today. And so are you ready to share that? <laughs> I do. Mandy, have you heard about the new movie on Netflix? What's it called? Constipation. It hasn't come out yet. Uh, <laughs> gross and awesome at the same time. <laughs> Love it. It's a favorite at our household. So yes. I, I would share it with everyone. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a guaranteed laugh right there. So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Pastor Ingrid, thank you for sharing your deep thoughts with us today and helping us to learn more about grace. You know, we want to learn all we can about how we can be a part of the church um, and what we can do. And a part of that is just learning too and growing in our own faith so we can share that with others. So thank you for helping us with that. And uh, we hope to see you back at camp here sometime soon. That would be wonderful. Thank you for having me. Yeah, we'll see you later. <laughs> Sounds great. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Pastor Ingrid. We're going to go on with our uh, song of the week, Grace on Top of Grace. for teaching us about your grace this week through Jesus' death and through his resurrection. And I just ask that you continue to show us this grace throughout our daily lives and also just for a fun and enjoyable weekend. In your name we pray. Amen. It's time for the blessing. God loves you. God loves you. Jesus gave his life for you. Jesus gave his life for you. The Holy Spirit is here with you. The Holy Spirit is here with you. So go and be the church. So go and be the church. This grace that we've been learning about is such an important part of the church, and we are given so much of it that we can go out and share it. Even though we're not in person, we can still share the grace that God has given us. So we're going to sing, 
let's be the church and think about this message as we sing it. I call your name, beloved, and claim, yes, I love you. Every day you'll hear me say, yes, I love you. Now I ask you, what can you do to say I love you? To everyone here and everyone there, say I love you. church so let's be the church share god's love to everyone let's start now